and we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our fourth segment. We're just going to be talking about the recent news with the Seattle Mariners and just giving my thoughts on it. So yeah, let's get into it. So over the weekend, it was announced from a joint article with Will Sam and Patrick Mooney and Ken Rosenthal at the Athletic, three of the best baseball writers in all of the league, that the Mariners plan to be very aggressive in adding offense this summer at the trade deadline, according to many sources. Now, another part of this that was big was that money was expected to not be an issue with this Mariners team, which is great, great news if you are a Mariners fan. Of course, they have caught a lot of flack over the past few years. Um, They've caught a lot of flack over the past few years with money being an obstacle in their team. And I'm very excited to see that they are not using this as an excuse to not get better. And I think it's a great, great job by them. And I'm very excited to see what they end up doing. So the Mariners are obviously in a very interesting spot here, leading the AL West by a significant amount with the Rangers and the Astros having really underwhelming seasons so far. The Mariners have used their pitching depth to really take ahead of this AL West right now. Of course, our six games above the Astros. So I've done a really great job this year. It's just the offense is, eh, it's okay. Their way to runs created plus currently is 97, so really they're just they're a little below average overall. A lot of their players have underperformed, so they definitely do need to add a big bat, and there are a lot of players that I think um, make a lot of sense for this team. Now, in the article, they do mention a good amount of players um, that could potentially be uh, fits for this team. Of course, you have Tommy Pham, Eloy Jimenez, Jazz Chisholm Jr., Brian De La Cruz, Taylor Ward, Luis Renjifo, Brandon Drury, Brent Rooker, Miguel Andujar, Randy Rosarena, Jesse Winker, Mark Canna. I think all those players are going to be available at this deadline, make a lot of sense, and I think, you know, fill different needs for this Mariners team. So I did want to talk about some players I think make a lot of sense for this, for this Mariners team um, and what they potentially look for in each player. Now, the Mariners are very interesting with the lineup as they did end up making a lot of different decisions with it. Of course, they didn't offer a qualifying offer to Teoscar Hernandez, who did end up leaving to go more west with the Dodgers and has ended up having an amazing season with them. Now, I don't know if Teoscar would have had the same season with the Mariners that he is having with the Dodgers, considering just the Dodgers are in a much better position than the Mariners are and are a much different organization, so I'm not going to hold that one against them. And plus, he did not look really good in his, in his time with the Mariners last year. Um, but also, you know, they shipped out a Eugenio Suarez, who, which has turned out to be a great decision as he has been a disaster for the Diamondbacks third base. Ended up shipping out former top prospect Jared Kalanick, really in a salary dump, which is a big, big decision for them. Again, has turned out to be fine. I mean, Kalanick's been a fine player for the Braves. Nothing really significant to talk about. But, yeah, just they made a lot of decisions this offseason with the money, and then ended up ended up trade for Polanco, ended up signing Miss Garver, who have both been okay. Both have definitely not lived up to their potential, but at the same time, both still have a lot of gro- room to grow and room to end up being the players that we all know about them. So um, a lot of interesting decisions made by the Mariners here. And I did want to give four names that I think made some sense for this Mariners team and were potentially good fits. So First one, first two I want to talk uh, talk about were our older rentals that aren't long term, but um, aren't aren't long term or just for this year and are just really short term fixes. So the first one I did want to talk about was Tommy Pham of the White Sox. Now Pham, of course, did sign with the White Sox very late into the year and has become a really really great bat for this for this White Sox team. I think calling him the best bat on this White Sox team would really be under underwhelming his abilities because. I could probably could be the best bat in this White Sox team, and I got and I was not very good when I played baseball. So, um, you know, I don't think it's um, a lot to say. But he's had a really nice season with them. 109 weighted runs created plus. Is in the um, did recently get injured, so I think that might have been affecting him a little bit. But I schooled down off a little bit, but still is a really fantastic player and brings a lot of brings a lot of um, heart to this Mariners team brings a lot of hustle, just brings a lot of leadership to this team, and he's just a very, very solid bat. I mean, there's really no other player more solid than Tommy Pham. He just hits the ball hard, hits it well, is a professional hitter, can play corner outfit if you need him to, plays DH mostly, but can do either, so brings a versatility there, and I just think would be a good short-term fit for this Manners team, and just would, if you don't want to shell out a lot of prospects, I think and um, getting Pham for this team 
would um, be a great move and would overall end up helping your team a lot. Again, I think you need someone higher than him, but if you don't want to go all in and you don't think there's anyone at this deadline that is worth going all in for, which I would understand, I think getting him would make a lot of sense and would end up being a very good move for this Mariners team. And I think Pham would make a lot of sense for Seattle. Next, we have kind of in the middle, not all in, but definitely not just a run to a long-term piece for this team. I have from the Oakland Athletics, Brett Rooker. Now, Rooker was a guy who was a throwaway a few years ago with this um, with this A's team and really was not thought of much, but has been absolutely fantastic with them over the past two years. Last year was really, really great as the DH of the A's. No one traded for him because they were kind of like, okay, you know what, he's having a good season, but is it really legit? I'm not sure if Rooker can keep up with it, and he's done just that this year, having an even better season than last year with the A's, and has become a very, very um, hot trade commodity right now, and is someone I definitely think is going to end up being traded for the A's, is the A's, of course, second biggest trade ship behind Mason Miller, who I don't think is going to be traded. So, yeah, I think that Brent Rooker would be kind of a middle part. He has three years control left after this with arbitration, and would definitely not be cheap, but isn't going fully all in as he's more of just a DH type. Can play first base, I believe, but again, is more of a DH type. So I think this would be a great bat for the Mariners to get. I think Rooker makes a lot of sense in this lineup as a big righty bat that can plot into the 3, 4, 5 spot. Would add a lot of more depth to this lineup overall, and I just think it would be a great, great move. I think would cost a good prospect, but not someone that would maybe be in the top 100 or someone that is really significant to your future. So I think Rooker would be a fantastic add to this Mariners team. I think he makes a lot of sense and overall would just be a great, great addition to this team. Again, the Mariners have a very, very um, good farm system right now. So trading someone, I don't, trading a big time uh, farm hand wouldn't be that big of a deal, I'd say. I mean, you have a lot of good pieces in this farm system. So, so overall, looking to get Rooker, I think will make a lot of sense and I think will be a very good fit for this Mariners team. Now, I did forget to mention the other rental I was talking about with the fam. I said four players. So that was also going to be Mark Canna of the Tigers. Canna, I think, would be a perfect fit for this for this Mariners team. He isn't having the greatest season, but it's still been solid. Another former Met like fam can play first base, can play the corner outfield, can play DH. is a versatile bat there, and it's just a good veteran bat that you can rely on to hit. That's really just what he does with the Tigers having a very underwhelming season. I think adding Canna would make a lot of sense. And I think overall would be a very, very good addition to this Mariners team. And uh, yeah, another rental I did want to mention. But now, if the Mariners want to go big game hunting, it's a man I've mentioned on the show before, who I think will be a perfect fit for this team. And that is from the Chicago White Sox, Luis Robert. I think Robert is such a great fit for the White, for this Mariners team. They need another outfielder. He brings a lot of defense to this team. Would allow would allow you to play him in left field, right field, maybe even move Julio would be very interesting to watch, but would definitely improve your outfield defense with both of those guys in the outfield. And, you know, Robert, you look at him, he has four years of control left, two years of club options at the bottom. So if you trade for him, you're getting at least two years of a fantastic player in Luis Robert, probably two more, assuming you exercise those club options, which are really not that expensive for a player of Robert's caliber, who is young as he is. And the Mariners would have to give up a lot of prospects, but you're getting a, a superstar who adds a ton of pop to your lineup, a ton of depth to your lineup, and would just be a fantastic fit on this team with Julio Rodriguez. Again, if you're looking to go all in, I think Robert is the perfect fit for this Mariners team. Just adds so much to this team and lineup, and I think, again, is an amazing, fantastic fit. And overall, it makes so much sense if you are a Mariners fan to end up getting Robert. I think if you're going to trade a prospect for someone... This is the year to get them, and I think and I think Robert is the is the player to get. I think he's just fantastic and really would be a great, great fit for this team. You know, I think the Mariners are a very underrated team going into the playoffs. I mean, I think it's very obvious they are going to make the playoffs, whether in a wild card format or a AL West, uh, or more more likely leading the AL West. And if you're in a playoff series, you do not want to face that rotation. Luis Castillo, Logan Gilbert, Brian Wu all the other fantastic arms they have on this team, you do not want to face them. And getting a big bat in their lineup to add in with the guys they already have, like Julio, would be a fantastic fit and would make them so good and just would make no team want to watch, want to see them in the playoffs. So 
If I'm a Mariners fan, I'd be excited about this year. I'd be excited about the uh, prospect of getting another big-time player, big-time bat. And, yeah, I think it would be very interesting to watch the rest of the year. Pete Alonso has also been someone that's been mentioned a lot with the Mariners in the past. I think he makes a ton of sense at first base. But with the Mets doing pretty pretty good over the last few weeks or so, I didn't think it was right to mention him because I think it's very unlikely that he gets traded at this point. So, yeah, overall, these these four guys, Mark Hanna, Tommy Pham, Brent Rooker, and Luis Robert would be fantastic fits for the Mariners in, their, in each of their own ways. Mariners have the depth to go out and get a big bat, and I think need to if they want to compete this year. I think they have um, every piece that to be able to, and yeah, I'd definitely go out looking for someone. So that was our fourth segment here, talking about the Seattle Mariners and the hunt for a big bat on the trade market. Going to our fifth and final segment here, which is going to be talking about Paul Skeens and the Pirates' resurgence over the past few weeks or so. So yeah, we'll be talking about them, and we'll see you after the break. So thanks, and...